Ezekiel chapter 29. In the tenth year, tenth is, ten is the number of Gentile. In the twelfth month, tenth month, in the twelfth day, twelve is the number of Israel of the month. This is of Nebuchadnezzar. The word of the Lord came unto me, saying, So this is dated. Son of man, set thy face against Pharaoh, king of Egypt, and prophesy against him, against all Egypt. So, here we go. Speak and say, Thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I am against thee, Pharaoh, king of Egypt, the great dragon. All right, so Revelation. Can't pass it up. I know some churches, you know, okay, let's just read. Okay, we, we, we did the Bible. We don't know the Bible, but we did the Bible. Revelation 12, 9. And the great dragon was cast out. The old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. Now, this Pharaoh's not the devil, but he's likened to the devil. And there are government officials who have been empowered by Satan. And before you go up, oh, yeah, President Biden. The Bible says that the devil is the king over the children of pride. I'll tell you, Donald Trump has a lot of pride. I wouldn't be throwing my hands at Donald Trump being saved and, and with his riches. And well. Pharaoh is one of them rulers, like the Pope. He's a ruler of a nation, like the Pope, Vatican State, got their own post office, got their own army, got their own currency. And he is a God king, as the Pope is a God. Pharaoh is a, is a God and king. The great dragon that lies in the midst of, the, of his rivers, that would be the Nile, which has said, this is what Pharaoh said, my river is my own. I own it. That's what America say about their land. And I have made it for myself. Well, look at look what Pharaoh's proclaiming. He is the creator. He is the God king and the Nile River and the Delta was made by him. That's a pretty bold statement. That goes against creation of God. That goes against evolution. That's, I made it. But I, God, will put a hook in thy jaws. I will cause fish of thy rivers to stick to thy scale. Now, one of the plagues was when the waters turned to blood, the fish died. It's going to happen in the tribulation period again. Now, the scales. Let's go to Job. Chapter 4, verse 15. Now, 4.15, or Job 41, I didn't think that was right, Job 41.15, Job 41.11 down is about Satan. Satan is likened to a sea animal, a fish, amphibian, reptile. 
exactly the class of animals that's missing in Ezekiel's creatures and the beast that John see in the book of Revelation. Man, eagle, ox, calf, no fish, no reptiles. So I'm telling you, I am going to tell you, and I don't care what you believe, I believe the Bible. When you get in the realm of the, of the dinosaurs, you are in the realm of Satan. And when you put that fish symbol on the back of your car, that ain't Jesus Christ, that's the devil. Well, Jesus told his disciples, be fishers of men. Draw out the fish and make them lambs. You don't turn them into fish. They get converted by God and become lambs. Sheep. But verse 15, his scales are his pride. Shut up together as a closed seal. One is so near to another that no air can come between them. Well, that's 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 a fish. That's a reptile. Look at verse thirty-four. I quoted. He beholdeth all high things. Satan has been in heaven. Satan's been in our space. Satan has been where NASA can never go. He is a king over all the children of pride. That's Satan. You, you can't say that's Christ. You can't say that's God. Because God in Christ has no pride. It's a sin. So we're looking at Ezekiel, Pharaoh, but we're also seeing again Satan. I will cause the fish to stick to thy scales. <clears throat> he is a fish. Aquaman. Dagon, I will bring thee up out of the midst of thy rivers, and all the fish of thy rivers shall stick unto thy scales. I will leave thee thrown in the wilderness. That's not where you put a fish. It's quite opposite. It's a fish out of water. All the fish of thy rivers. Thou shalt fall upon open fields. Thou shalt not be brought together, nor gathered. I have given thee for meat to the beasts to the beasts of the field and to the fowls of heaven. Yeah. That's almost what happens to, to the men of Armageddon. All that happens to Egypt shall know that I am the Lord. What their their ruler is gone. <laughs> because they have been a staff of reed to the house of Israel. A reed is not a staff. You're not a reed is a leaf. You're not going to use that to walk. Imagine you see somebody, you know somebody who uses a cane. Take the cane away from him and, and use a, a, a big long leaf. And he's going to do the purpose. When they took hold of thee by thy hand, thou didst break. That's the reed. That's a staff. That's that's not a very good cane. It's not a good crutch. Israel's turned into Egypt as a crutch and rend all the shoulder. It causes more damage. And when they lean upon thee, thou breakest. It made us all their loins to be at a stand. Therefore, thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I will bring a sword, war, upon thee. And cut off man and beast out of the Egyptians. God told Israel in the law, Moses wrote, don't go back. He told the rulers, don't go back for horses, don't go back for wives, don't go back. The land of Egypt shall be desolate and waste. They shall know that I am the Lord. Because he has said, the river is mine. And I have made it. So he's taken the creative ability of God and applied it to himself. 
And woe be to the popes when they stand before God. They say, they're, you know, they're the Holy Father. You said a mouthful, buddy. Woe be to the Americans in their pride. It is my money. It is me. It is my freedom. We got our freedom from, from our military. We got our freedom from our government and leave completely God out. And we have a contract with the United States of America called the Constitution with no God and no Jesus. I read with this, with this new Delta virus, whatever this virus is, uh, that President Biden is going to call money for from the military. What on earth is your guns, is your tanks, is your submarines, is your jeeps going to do against a virus? Come on, you gun owners, you, you biblical Christians with your gun authority. What's your 45 going to do against this virus? What's your guns going to do against the fires? What's your guns going to do against the hurricane? What's your guns going to do against the almighty God? You want your guns, you want your freedom, but you don't want the Bible and you don't want God only when he, when you need him. And you walk up to God and you put your 25 cent prayer quarter in the thing and then you get mad because you didn't get the color bubble gum you wanted. And you're, in God we trust with all the sin that, that lies rampant. All the deception that all Republicans and Democrats have been deceiving the people of America. All of them. Pride. It amazes me. You get pastors, get up. I am so proud of my church. I am so proud of my children. I am so proud of my deacon. I am so proud of my way. The king over the children of pride is not God. It's Satan. It's a sin. But you can't tell the lies to see in church aids that. Eh? There was somebody that, that took a, a, a speech about Adolf Hitler. And they marked down all the times that me, I, and it was remarkable how many, that, how many times in one speech that guy spoke about himself. You better watch what you say. The river is mine. I am made. That's Pharaoh's feet. And Jesus said that every idle word, man shall give it account. So when these Christians get up to Merry Christmas, now we don't say Happy Holidays, we say Merry Christmas, Merry Christ Mass, you're going to be held accountable. Because the Mass is when you walk up and you take the literal body and the literal blood of Jesus Christ, you ask any Lutheran and you ask any Catholic, it is the literal body and blood of Jesus Christ. That has no place for a saved Christian. You're going to be held accountable. You don't want to listen to me. You don't want to know the truth. Okay. Keep on to opening your big fat mouth. Keep on telling them Easter is the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Well, when you come around Easter, I'm going to find out when Passover is. I'm going to count three days and three nights. That's the resurrection. I guarantee you won't fall on Passover. I won't fall on Easter. Then you're lying. Then you're going to be held accountable. Just like Pharaoh. We are to learn from 29, verse 9. Pharaoh said something. And God said, I'll hold it to you. Solomon, and I believe the law, and maybe Paul even said, even Jesus said, I know that. You better watch what oaths you make. When you stand before that preacher or that government official or the ship captain and you say, I will, I do take that woman, I do take that man, you better, you better hold to it. Right, anybody can be saved. But you know what a disciple, you know what Jesus said about disciple? You better think about it. You got to give up your family. You got to give up yourself. You got to give up all and carry your cross. Don't you give up everything. Don't you carry that cross and say, I'm going to do it. And then you give up. God's going to hold you to it. I've been in churches before where, 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 where the parents or the one parent get up there. I'm going to dedicate my son and daughter to the Lord. And with not even a year, they're away from the church and out living carnally. God's going to hold you to it. 
You better be thankful we got we got first John one nine. If we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Behold, therefore I am against thee, against thy rivers. And look what God did to, to the rivers when Egypt was there. The waters turned to blood, the fish died, it stank. The frogs came out of the water and they went back to the water. Dead. I will make the land of Egypt utterly waste and desolate. From the tower of Syene, even unto the border of Ethiopia. No foot of man shall pass through it, nor foot of beast shall pass through it. Neither shall it be inhabited forty years. Now, um, this passage here says, um, Wesley says that this happened to warrant the king. I think Jeconiah. I, I don't know. Could have been. But God said 40 years. No, is that 40? 40 is a number of testing. I will make the land desolate, the land of Egypt desolate in the midst of the countries that are desolate. And her cities among the cities that are laid away shall be desolate 40 years. Israel was in, the, was in the wilderness 40 years. Moses was up on the mountain 40 days and 40 nights. Jesus was up on the mountain 40 days and 40 nights. I believe Moses was 40 when he left Egypt, came back when he was 80. I will scatter Egyptians among the nations like he does Israel. And will disperse them through the country like he does Israel. Look at that. Yet thus saith the Lord God, at the end of forty years will I gather the Egyptians, like he did for it, like he will for Israel. I know a missionary dentist that goes over well, except for COVID nineteen, but he would go over there and he would do dentist work for the, and, and witness Jesus Christ. I guarantee he got a better reception than the people in America. From the people, whether they are scattered. I will bring again the captivity and will cause them to return to the land of Pathos. In the land of their habitation, they shall be there a base kingdom. That's interesting. Edom gets totally wiped off. It shall be the basis of kingdoms needed. Neither shall it exalt itself any more above the nations. Well, Egypt today kind of in the realm of terrorism. Egypt today is an ex exalted, you know, the pyramids and the, and the Sphinx and the, all the artifacts are in the. They got dedicated wings and museums. The Egyptian. We went to a we went to a couple art things, art places, art show, and there's one Pacific region of of you know Africa. Every child is taught the pharaohs and Egypt in school, except for the story of Israel. It shall be no more a confidence of the house of Israel. In other words. Israel is not going to rely on Egypt any longer. It's going to rely on Jesus. That's the millennium. Which bringeth their iniquity to remembrance when they shall look after them, but they shall know that I am the Lord. There is twice. It came to pass at the seventh and twentieth year, the first month, in the first day of the month. Look at that date. The word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, caused his army to serve a great service against Tyrus. We read about it. Nebuchadnezzar first went in Tyrus and combated and destroyed Tyrus where they went out to the island nation. And later on, Alexander the Great got him. But God told Nebuchadnezzar, go in there and attack Tyrus. And he did. Every head was made bald for death. We talked about that the other night. Every shoulder was peeled. I don't know. 
yet he had no wages for his army. For Tyrus, for the service that he had served against. So evidently there was no spoil from Tyrus. But remember how rich Tyrus was? Remember how wonderful great Tyrus was? The Babylonian army, the Chaldean army didn't get no payment. Therefore, thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I will give the land of Egypt into Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon. He shall take her multitude and their spoil and their prey, and it shall be wages for his army. I'm wondering if this is the time when, when Jeremiah is kidnapped going into Babylon, I mean Egypt. And God tells him to hide the bricks or the stones by the, built, by the brick kilns, and Babylon's going to come and destroy Egypt. I wonder if this is what he's talking about. Because it happened during Jeremiah's time. Egypt will be the wages that they didn't get in Tyrus. I have given him the land of Egypt for his labor, wherein he has served against it. Because they wrought for me, saith the Lord. You know, when you do work for the Lord, he's going to pay you. And when you do service for the devil, you're going to get a page that's called the wages of sin is death. If you do right by the Lord as a Christian, you're going to get gold, silver, precious stone, right to inheritance, crowns. In that day will I cause the horn, that's strength, of the house of Israel to bud. I will give thee the opening of the mouth in the midst of them. And they shall know that I am the Lord. 